Good afternoon, students, and welcome to week nine. You have three more weeks left of this class. And so uh, next week, I will post your last day of class. And you got to remember that after the last day of class, which I have to look up what that is, uh, midnight Pacific, you have to hand in all of your assignments. And then after midnight on the last day of class, uh, this your classroom is going to be locked. And therefore, you're not going to be able to hand in anything late because you won't have access to your classroom anymore. So that's why you need to get everything in and it'll be due on a Friday. And so as of next week, uh, I will post your last day of class and the actual date. I always do it on the week 10 of every, you know, of every class. So anyway, this week you're going to be doing week nine forum where you're gonna write a persuasive essay. And so star, um, what is a persuasive essay? Did you read up on it in your textbook and in your notes? I did. It's not like a negative argument, um, but it's um, voicing my perspective in, like, in a healthy way. Not, and the thesis statement should not be a negative statement. I okay. did read that. Okay. Okay. What else? Um, I read that you want to end your persuasion with my point and even though you include other alternative ways to view it, you do those first so that the reader is left with my persuasion versus someone else's. So get those out earlier. Very good. And so you got that off of the textbook. The language that is good to use, like different words that are good to use um, for the grammar of it. Okay, excellent. So you are off. Uh, so you got this off of the textbook, and so basically, um, a persuasive essay is when you want to convince someone of your point of view. And so um, base, and you have to, so when you write a uh, persuasive essay, you have to take a stance, you have to take a position, and you have to take one side, and then you use your thesis statement to state your position. You are either for or against your topic. You're either for abortion or against abortion. You're either for gun control or against gun control. And so if you're against gun control, you would say you, your thesis statement would be gun control is not necessary because, and then you would write your three reasons. And then if you get stuck on your three reasons, you can always go to ChatGPT and say, why are three reasons why um, gun control is, what are three reasons why gun control is not necessary? And then ChatGPT can help you with idea generation and can come up with your three reasons. And so basically um, that's, and then your three reasons will then become your um, body paragraphs. And so um, this week you're going to write a, uh, in your week nine, you're gonna choose a topic from the procon.org website. And that website will show you all the different topics of all the different, and if you have a topic that's not listed in procon.org, you can always email me to ask for approval. So basically, ah, good afternoon, Roxanne. How are you doing? And I think Roxanne is in my, um, which school? You've got to be my new uh, Los Angeles Pacific University student. Am I correct? Yeah, I think, I think, I think she's in my other school. But anyway, um, but you're going to be doing the persuasive essay in essay two. For you, for you guys, it's going to be in week four. And so for you guys, it's in week nine. Now that I have two different schools, but both of you do write the um, you know, persuasive essay. So getting back to the persuasive essay, so you want to convince someone of your point of view. And so you're going to write um, five paragraphs. And then in your essay, you have an introduction. And you have the uh, hook, five background sentences. And then you have your thesis statement. Your thesis statement, where is your thesis statement located? What is a thesis statement? The last sentence of the first paragraph. And what is the purpose of a thesis statement? To um, explain my, my, what is gonna be contained in my argument or thought? Yes, yes. So it's the main idea of the essay. And mm -hmm. so, so it's the, um, it's what the whole essay is going to be about, and your thesis statement is, the, is a roadmap to your essay. So if you have a good thesis statement, then you have good essay unity and good essay coherence. So, you, so a thesis statement is key. 
And so then if I say that um, then reason one becomes paragraph two, reason three becomes paragraph, um, oh, I, let me do that again. Paragraph two is reason one, paragraph three is reason two, and paragraph four is reason three. So the three reasons in your thesis statement will then become your three body paragraphs. Then you have your conclusion. And how do we start the conclusion? What's the very first sentence? Restating our thesis statement. Restate, we restate, our thesis, restate our thesis. Excellent. And then you summarize your and then you summarize your um, your essay. And so um, I forgot what I was going to say. Yeah. So so basically, so for your week nine forum, all you're going to do is you're going to write out your um, persuasive essay, your first draft. And then week 10, uh, then I will give you feedback. And then week 10, based on the feedback that I give you and based on the feedback that other students give you, then in week 10, you rewrite your persuasive essay uh, final draft. So we're only going to be doing the persuasive essay in week 9 and week 10. And we're going to take a break from the comparison contrast essay. Then after week 10, uh, we'll come back to comparison contrast essay in week 11. This is the reason why when I gave you your week 8 feedback, you'll notice that I said, you're ready to write your rough draft in week 11. And a lot of people are scratching their heads going, week 11? That next week's week 9. Why is she talking about week 11? Well, the reason why is because that's the, that's the next time you're going to come back to comparison contrast essay. And so then you're going to go back to your week 8 feedback and then rewrite your week 8 um, as comparison contrast essay for week 8, uh, for week 11 and 12. And then you're going to study for your final exam. And so um, now you should start studying for your final exam. And it's it should cover uh, chapters 1 through 14. So if you look at the quiz guide that I gave all of you at your welcome letter, if you go all the way back to the welcome letter uh, that I should have attached the welcome to the welcome letter, the uh, chapter 1 through 14. And then you can, even though they're not exactly the same uh, questions, I think that they're, it's 80%, I said this many times. So you should start studying your chapters 1 through 14 uh, guide. And you should also be making index cards of all the words that's on the self-study. You should start doing that now. And you should by now have all of your, at least half of all the words. Have you been doing your index card religiously? Because if you're just starting now, it's going to be a lot of work. You're supposed to be doing mm -hmm. it as, you're supposed to be doing it as each week. So each week you read five chapters, then you do five uh, chapters of index cards. You don't wait until the very last minute, otherwise you're not going to have the time. And so this goes for if you're studying, especially if you're studying chapter after chapter in and the nutrition class has a flat world um, textbook as well. So you're going to be doing the same thing for your nutrition class. And therefore, you start with, you write all the index cards. And all the, in, all the index cards come off the self-study. So both this uh, English 101 textbook and the nutrition textbook, both flat world, both have that self-study uh, feature from which you can base your, um, your index cards. And so to study for your nutrition quizzes, just like uh, English 101 quizzes, you have to memorize your index cards. So just a heads up for those of you who are, so, so I don't know about chemistry and all the others. Um, it's probably, they probably still have their old textbook. But I just know that nutrition has it because I saw it on one of the tutorials on how to use this textbook. Some nutrition teacher did that. So have you been using the self-study feature? in yes. the flat world. Has it helped you a lot? Yeah, it does. Sometimes I get frustrated with the AI questions. I can tell the difference. You know, some of them seem so close or oh, yeah. a couple with the same answer. Like for the finals, will they not? They'll make sure it's not like questions that are wrong, right? Well, uh, I haven't looked at the final yet because it's a hundred questions. And, gotcha. and so basically what I could do is I could take a preview of the final, but, they, but even if I take a hundred questions, then they're going to come up with another hundred. It's not, it's not um, guaranteed that, the, right. that when I take it, because each student has, when they take it, everyone gets a different 
a set of 100 questions. So right. I don't want students complaining, hey, but it wasn't on, because I sometimes create a study guide based on, the, because, uh, based on the test that I take, and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't, you know, but, but some questions match. So that's why you have to study. Basically, there's no shortcut. There's no magic, you know, magic pill. All you have to do is just every, every week be doing your, your uh, let's see, can you see this? Your index mm -hmm. card. So this is very, it's hard for, it's hard to, it's hard to see that. But um, anyway, so that's what you have to be starting to study for you. And if you have any questions, and also, this is important, also in on the Professor H writing channel, okay, I have recorded myself reading all of the chapters. So all you have to do is put into the search box, first go to Professor H writing channel, then put in um, chapter four, section five, chapter five, section three, you got to put that in and then press uh, enter and then my video for say chapter five, section two will then pop up. Okay. It, so you still have to read it first, then you listen to it. So that's another mm -hmm. way. So that's another way for you to reinforce your studying. So I did read over and also create a mini lecture on each of the chapters of all the chapters. So basically, let me repeat this for the people at home. Uh, you go to Professor H writing channel. Then you put in a chapter one, section one in the search engine, and then press enter. And then my video of me reading chapter one, section one will come up. And so you can do this if you have a particular chapter, you're having trouble understanding, and you just need more reinforcement, that sort of thing. You don't have to do this for every single chapter unless you want to. So that's totally up to you since everybody has their own study style. Some people like listening. Uh, other people like you, you want to talk about it. That's kinesthetic. And then other people just want to read, and that's, that's visual. And so it all depends on your learning style and how you, and each person instinctively knows what makes them more comfortable for studying for that. But you should all be starting to study now, and you should all be going to self-study and be creating your index cards. So uh, if you have any questions, feel free to email me at any time and don't forget to subscribe to the Professor H writing channel. And so this week is really, really short and that's it.